there, everyone. Uh, this is going to be a tutorial. Let me go ahead and render this. I'll show you how to do something like this, where you can have a 3D object and you can um, insert it into a pre-rendered scene, for example, live action footage or something like that. So if you look at this uh, scene here, you can see that there's, there's the monkey hiding uh, behind this block. And if we switch to our camera view, you can see that the block is actually... Well, once you see the rendered uh, image, you see that the, the block takes over the uh, image of the background. So I'll show you uh, two things in this tutorial. Number one is how to add the background image to your scene. And the other thing is how to have uh, objects in your scene take on the attributes of the, uh, um, of the background image. All right, so let's start a new scene here. And let me turn on my screencast keys. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an image to our background here so we can see what we're working with. So let's turn on background images. N key and we'll add an image and we'll just say open and I'll go to my thing here add background.png alright so um, now we have our, our background image in there uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to have my rendered image match the size of the background image so I'm gonna go to my camera tab and I'm gonna go and select under my preset here I know that this image is 720 by 460. All right, I just know that that's the way it is. All right, so now we have our image in there, but if we hit F12 and render, you'll see that the image is not showing up in our scene. So what we gotta do is uh, we have to go to our compositing. So let's go and click on the node editor. And then you'll see there's three options here. There's materials, come on you, textures, and the final one is the compositing. So you want to click on compositing and check mark use nodes. All right, and then this will come up. This is your compositing setup here. All right, so let's uh, first thing we're going to need is we're going to need an image. So we'll hit, uh, uh, do input image. Shift A, for example, is uh, the shortcut for opening something. Oops. And then I'll just go ahead and click on the little drop down here because we already have the background loaded. Okay, the next thing we need to do is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, let's hit Shift A again and go to, should be under, color, under color, alpha, over. Alrighty, just drag this out here. All right, and then under the uh, alpha over uh, node here, you just go ahead and you uh, drag the um, image onto the top notch there, and then the rendered uh, layer onto the bottom notch, and then you just wire this uh, composited element into the final. All right. I know that seems strange. You would think that the image would go in the background, but uh, the rendered layer actually goes to the bottom part. So if we render now you'll see that it actually adds the background image there. So that's how to get the background image into your scene. All right, let's go back to our 3D view. All right, so now um, let's go ahead and start adding our objects. So I'll hit Shift A, and I'll add a mesh on a cube. Zero to go back to my guy here. I'll just uh, position this cube here. This will be kind of like the, the base of the sink. And then I'll just go ahead and scale this out so it kind of covers all the, the bottom of the sink there alrighty uh, let's add our monkey in here now well I'll do that after this okay so the next thing you need to do is we need to add a, um, a material to this cube so that if we render it right now we'll see that the cube is actually taking on it just has a flat material so we need to add a material that is going to uh, take on the attributes of the background image. So we'll go to our materials tab, click on new, and then what we got to do here is turn on shadeless. I'm going to turn off under shadow here. I'm going to turn off receive and cast. Okay, so shadeless just means that it's not going to get any shading from any lights or anything like that. It's going to be flat, and of course, you know, the other options, um, receiving and casting shadows, I don't want it to cast shadows. I just want this thing to be part of the background. So uh, the next thing I need to do is um, we're going to go to our textures tab and let's go ahead and add a texture and we need to set the type to image 
and then for the image where we use that background image. But here's the thing, um, the core, if we were to render this uh, now, you can see that the coordinates are all messed up. <clears throat> so we need to have the coordinates of the object uh, of the mesh stick to the background. Uh, so what we do is just hit, I'm going to hit space to bring up my search item here. And with my object selected, I'm just going to type in sticky. And then you can see we have two options here. So I'm going to click on add sticky. It doesn't look like anything happened, but in fact added texture coordinates, mapping coordinates, so that when we go into our uh, texture tab here for our material, under our mapping, uh, you can see that they're sticky in here. I mean, it's going to be in here anyway, but if you select sticky now, and if we render this, you'll see now that, in fact, the, um, the cube is taking on the attributes of the background, all right? So now, if we were to hit Shift-A and add the monkey here, okay, let's scale up a little bit, and make it look like she's peeking out of the uh, sink. Now, if I were to render, you'll see that um, the background is, is uh, the object is occluding this, um, this mesh. So it looks like the monkey is actually inside of the background image, all right? So, uh, I hope that that helps you out. Um, those two techniques, uh, you can use them in a lot of different ways. And, um, yeah, uh, you can get a myriad of effects from those two techniques.